Night City is a city unlike any, and whilst it looks bright and colourful and full of opportunity, realistically only the strong survive here and make a name for themselves as legends. Underneath the bright and bold colours is a world run by terrifying individuals and corporations who will do anything to make their name mean something and gain enough eddies that they can live the best life they can think of. On the streets there is a bigger threat however, as multiple gangs rule their respective regions, ruling their own part of the land, making rules within them and ultimately taking from those weaker than them. These gangs are all so different from one another and have unique cultures that make them stand out for anyone who is unlucky enough to come into contact with them. But who are these gangs? How did they set up? Where are they based? What is their society and culture like? And who is the most terrifying gang of them all? Well in today's video we will be looking at all of the gangs of the inner city of Night City within Cyberpunk 2077 and rank them in order of who is the most powerful. These are the gangs of Inner Night City from Cyberpunk 2077. But before we talk about the individual gangs, I just want to say a huge thank you for your overwhelming support this past year for helping this channel get to almost 70,000 subscribers. And because of your support, this channel is now affiliated with G Fuel and has given us a unique code that will allow all of you guys the opportunity to get a nice discount on all of their products, which not only gives you a really tasty, refreshing drink, which honestly I absolutely love, especially the clickbait and PewDiePie flavors, but it also allows you to support this channel and allow me to keep making videos like this. These drinks have seriously helped me out when I'm making these videos and long editing sessions and also they are just so refreshing to have in the morning or afternoon when you need that little pick me up to keep on working or even if you're just on a binge session of your favorite game. Honestly I never thought I'd be in this position and I am so grateful for your support so thank you so much and if you want to support me further why not pick up a tub of your favorite flavor, sit back, crack it open and enjoy whilst watching some lore videos. But yeah thank you to you guys for this opportunity opportunity. Thank you to G Fuel and please check out the link in the description and pick yourself up a tub or two today to help support this channel as well. But with that said, let's get back to it and explore the gangs from Cyberpunk. We start our list with the youngest gang in the whole of Night City who are very different to all the others on the list, being far more welcoming to those they meet and quite passive as a faction. The Mox unofficially started back in 2067. During that year, one woman named Elizabeth Borden, also known as Lizzie, had set up her own strip club within the district of Watson. The club became an instant hit with the locals and because of its overwhelming popularity became a local hotspot for corpos and anyone wanting to let their hair down. But Lizzie not only became known for creating this successful strip club, but she also became a legend within the area, gaining a ton of reputation as she would defend prostitutes from their violent clients who would use the dancers to get rid of their stresses and anger. For a good while, Lizzie was feared by the clients who knew that if they were to lay a hand on her models, they would feel her full force. Unfortunately, from a few individuals from a gang we will explore later known as the Tiger Claws, they would ignore Lizzie's warnings and instead would go on to do horrific things to one of her dancers and eventually would kill her. This made Lizzie furious seeing what they had done to one of her girls and with this she grabbed her axe and killed all three of the members who had killed her employee and with their corpses she would display them in front of her bar making a clear statement that if anyone was to do this again within her establishment this would be their ultimate fate. But sadly this did not end the conflict. In fact it made it worse for Lizzie and her bar as the Tiger Claws had heard of what had happened and took to raid in the club and demolishing her bar and in the end would find Lizzie herself and get their revenge, killing her in the process. Thinking that this would have now ended all of Lizzie's influence within Watson and on the rest of the city, the Tiger Claws were also wrong and instead of silencing them, prostitutes would admire Lizzie all over the city and rose up and started rioting with the rioters targeting all businesses that were owned by the Tigers. With this all happening, Elizabeth Lizzie Borden became the figurehead for change within the community and with it, all of the rioters who were mainly night workers would form under one banner known as 
the Mox. Making their statement all over the city, the newly formed gang would go on to rebuild her once strip club again and began commemorating it to her, naming it as Lizzie's Bar, filling it with all of the new gang members of the Mox and becoming a safe haven for anyone who felt threatened and oppressed, especially within the sex worker profession. To this day, the Mox are still thriving within Lizzie's Bar. Their numbers aren't exactly high, but they are growing by the day and are well respected throughout all of Watson. Their main source of income is clearly made through Lizzie's Bar, which has now been turned into a brain dance club. The gang is not territorial and does not look to expand outward into neighboring areas. Instead, their true goal is just to protect their facilities, members, and sex workers who operate in the vicinity of Lizzie's Bar. The mocks are also pretty easy to spot when traveling the city, donning cheaply made punk-like clothing that does not restrict their movement in any way, making them look more like gangsters than traditional sex workers. Those who are more on the protective side to things, however, are heavily heavily modified with their bodies being made to look far more plasticky, to look like dolls. Maybe to make sure they are heavily protected from physical harm and possibly gunfire. On top of that, the gang also wear their own personalized clothing brand, which is called simply Bitch. The mocks are probably the weakest of all the gangs within Night City. However, that does not necessarily mean they are easy to take out in combat. For almost a decade, they have been a haven for those oppressed and vilified by abusive clients. And if you were to wrong them, like like the Tigers did back in 2067, they will easily fight back and seek ultimate revenge. a similar role in terms of gang structure are the Animals of Pacifica. This gang is seen to most as just an aggressive street fighting booster gang who originated from West Pacifica with their most significant trait being that they put all of their emphasis into physical power above anything else. Traditional cyberware is not really valued within their community and instead all of their focus goes on enhancing themselves with melee combat enhanced implants as well as ultra testosterone animal supplements and a steroid like drug known as the juice, which increases their strength and speed. The animals don't necessarily have a base of operation, however they mainly sell off their services to others, with the animals being seen most of the time as bouncers outside of nightclubs, and to those within that industry, they are highly desirable, as they are not to be messed with due to their grand stature. That's not to say they only do that, they also have cornered the illegal substance trade, as well as being the go-to gang for underground live or die prize fighting. If you were to ever see all all of the animals in one place at one time, you know they are up to something. And for your safety, it's probably best to get out of there at once. Selecting their leader is pretty simple. They will do this like any animal does out in nature. Whoever is the strongest and the fastest within their community will earn the title of their leader. And in the year of 2077, the animal's leader is one individual known as Sasquatch, a giant fierce lady known as Matilda K. Rose. Whilst the gang is not massively territorial, they will go out of their way to challenge anyone who seeks to take them over and will drug themselves up more and more to make sure they are threatening to anyone who witnesses them. They will also sport tattoos and hooligan hoods as well as artificial animalistic features such as spotted or striped skin or even bestial jaws. But with this, the animals are also fascinated with feral primal side of human nature. Wanting to find that border between man and animal is a personal quest for them and if they find that border, they will self identify themselves as a new dominant human subspecies. To achieve this, the animals subject themselves to brutal and violent tests of skill, such as taking on heavily modified individuals from gangs to police members and even corporate forces such as the Arasaka and Militech. And on top of all of that, they frequently test their skills on each other by setting up fighting pits to test their overall skills and make it so it's survival of the fittest. Whilst the animals are no joke as they could rip you in half due to their heavily enhanced strength, they are seen as one of the weakest gang factions simply due to the fact that they are not the most organized and will rage war on their own members if it meant that they could test their skills and improve themselves. They do not seek to expand outwards either, making them similar to the mocks, but far more violent. If their leadership was to look outwards, maybe they could be one of the biggest gangs out there. But for now, they are simply just a big pack of animals looking to improve themselves and become that new dominant human subspecies. Thank you. 
Next up are the horrible low-life individuals known simply as the scavengers or the scavs as they are more popularly referred to as. Scavs are found all over the landscape of Night City, once again not really having any main parts of territory. The main goal for this gang is simple, it is to seek out bits of cyberware technology either that's lying about on the streets and in buildings or within individuals and forcibly take it for themselves to then sell on the black market. Most of the time they will require the cyberware by capturing random individuals and stripping them of their wares and essentially leaving them for dead. It is said but it isn't 100% confirmed that most of the scavs are from or at least connected to the Soviet Union, with a lot of their members speaking Russian, tagging areas with Russian graffiti or even listening to Russian music within their hideouts wherever they may be. They are also recognized mainly by their Soviet cyberware, as well as their clothing of mainly tracksuits, as well as their bodies being heavily coated with tattoos. It is safe to say that the only reason the scavs came to be was because of the massive overwhelming demand for cyberware and the increase in price on the international markets. Taking cyberware off of individuals is an extremely barbaric thing to do, but it is incredibly profitable. And because of that simple fact, that is exactly why the scavs operate and make most of their income from abductions and mutilating anyone they see having fancy hardware on them. As mentioned by some people, you could call them grave robbers were it not for the fact that they never wait for a body to reach the graveyard, nor for it to be actually dead. There's no official hierarchy to the scavs. They mainly operate in smaller groups with no real philosophy to follow. The only thing being to make profits. However, saying that they do have some leaders who usually show themselves off as being the most terrifying, savage, as well as cunning individuals you will ever meet. Whilst it may seem like the mocks and animals could easily outdo the scavengers, the scavengers are so spread out and are so deadly with their way of life that they could easily be a threat to anyone they get their sights on. They will do anything to make sure they can sell on the black market and will not care who an individual is. If they have cyberware on them that will earn a profit, they will capture them, strip them of all their parts and discard them like a piece of meat. If you were to live in Night City, be careful not to have expensive cyberware on your persons or you will be a prime target to this large group of gangsters who will do anything they can to rip that technology off of you. The scavs are not to be messed with and they could be located anywhere within this terrifying city. The next gang on our list are an extremely deadly faction who are to be feared at all costs. This gang is known as the Voodoo Boys. Like many of the other gangs, the Voodoo Boys history dates back to the early 2000s. Back then, this group was a terrorist gang of drug dealers who would engage in regular magical rituals and dealing drugs to students near the university. Unlike other gangs, the Voodoo Boys were completely sadistic and for no real reason would actively seek to kill and torture anyone they got their hands on. Some victims wouldn't suddenly be attacked however. Before they were, they would sometimes be warned with chicken blood and feathers on their doorstep. But this was never consistent and a lot of time people would just disappear from their home with the voodoo boys claiming it was their work to enhance that sense of terror within the community. To a few of the students they would deal to, this constant drug abuse and obsession with violence would be seen as attractive to them and the students would want to join their ranks, which the voodoo boys would allow but did not consider them to be true members of the gang, using them only as a form of cannon fodder for low-level crimes or use them to gain funds from their families' homes. But despite being known for their horrific crimes, no one knew where the Voodoo Boys really held their bases as no one in the 2000s up to 2020 had infiltrated them. Even media outlets that wanted to cover the gang for a news story lost two high-profile reporters in the process, making it clear that the Voodoo Boys were close to the rest of the city and no one would know of their operations. But because of this stance, the NCPD always made the Voodoo Boys high on the priority list because of their violent nature, as well as the terror they put out into the community. But because of that terror they brought, this meant that local merchants and citizens of the area would be too scared to speak out, and when interviewed by the NCPD, they would become extremely uncooperative. However, it was eventually found out that most of their operations, mainly in the drug dealing side of things, were held at Hababas, an ex-bike 
like a bar. But unlike today, the gang's identity was very different. In the 2020s, the Voodoo Boys were mainly young white males who modified their bodies to have feather implants, tattoos, and bones through their noses and ears. There were some female members, but it was mainly a male-dominated society, with each member wanting to prove how manly they really were, and the women having to prove they were twice as manly as the male members. By the 2040s and moving forward to the 2060s, the gang started to change its identity on the inside. This was all due to the influx of refugees who had come to Night City from Haiti and the decimated Dominican Republic. Seeing the gang known as the Voodoo Boys and the culture they had crafted for themselves, the refugees took major offense and immediately attacked the gang members, maiming victims and dissecting the dead with machetes, leaving them outside of their new area as a warning for anyone who went against them. With this change in power, a new era of the Voodoo Boys had been established and in 2045, the gang became composed of voodoo priests and priestesses, more to the tradition and culture of the true Haitian people. But as the decades went on and the world went into 2062, climate change had become so bad that the country of Haiti was wiped off of the world completely. This changed the overall ambitions of the Voodoo Boys as they became the new self-appointed guardians of Haitian refugees' interests and safety in the Pacifica combat zone. But they didn't want to stop there and as the Voodoo Boys ventured into the year of 2077 would take up an interest in net running to try and discover the secrets of the old net and what was behind the black wall which was a firewall developed by Netwatch tasked at keeping rogue AIs from breaking through into the rest of cyberspace and wreaking havoc. Venturing into this field the ones who took up net running became some of the best throughout all of Night City meaning they could hack into any of their enemies databases if they so wished. The gang is now fully influenced by the people of Haiti with none of its original members really playing a part in it anymore. Most likely, they have been killed by the new members. Brigitte is the new leader with her second in command being Placide, and whilst they still have their overall goal of saving the Haitian culture, they also found themselves in a small war against the booster gang previously explored, named the Animals. Whilst the Voodoo Boys gang are quite small, like many of the other gangs on list this, they are extremely deadly if you are to wrong them. They are extremely loyal proud and have a tight community and good leadership. Whilst not as sadistic as their previous rulers, that's not to say they still aren't capable of killing you in brutal ways and hanging up your body as a warning for anyone else who wants to destroy their small safe haven for Haitian refugees. Moving over to a far more organized gang and arguably one of the largest out there within the city is the Valentinos of Haywood. The Valentinos history dates back to 2020, where this poser gang spent most of their time seducing the most attractive women within the whole of Night City. Their main aim was to seek out the most desirable women out there, and the more attractive she was, the more of a target she would be for the gang. That was all they did as a gang. There was no territory, there was no goal of expansion, the only aim was to seduce women and wear them as a badge to show how good they were at pulling women. To most, this gang was relatively harmless, especially to the women they sought out, even though they were extremely relentless. However, for husbands and boyfriends of the attractive women, these gang members would not hold back and would assault them if they got in the way of their goals. Once they had found their attractive women, they would all congregate four times a year and go on to compare their conquests. By the year of 2077, the gang has changed a bit, but not not so much that they are totally unrecognizable. Now becoming one of the largest gangs with around 6,000 members, the Valentinos turned into a mostly Latino gang, with most members coming from Latino backgrounds. Although that's not to say all of them have to come from that background to join the gang. Setting up within the Haywood area, this is where they would primarily base themselves, right in the heart of the Latino community living there. This gang is extremely noticeable as they openly display their gang tattoos, wear tons of jewelry, with most of it being religious motifs, with their most popular religious idols being the Santa Muerte and Jesus Malverde. On top of that, the gang loves their automobiles and always likes to customize them with gold and tons of other cosmetics to allow them to stand out when they're on the road. With these customizations, the gang members also like to show off how much they have beefed up their rides by doing regular drag and street races against one another to prove who has the better ride. They also don't hold back there. They would also go on to get cyberware that is 
also gold and even weaponry that is completely gold plated and stands out from miles out. To put it bluntly, you'll see the Valentinos coming a mile off if you upset them. Whilst they do take outsiders into their gang from other communities, that's not to say that they are completely open to everyone, usually only taking those from local areas of Haywood, the Glen and Vista del Rey. Because of this community aspect, this makes it almost like a family. And for anyone who wanted to join from XNCPD, for example, corporate or military, it would be almost impossible for them to fit into the gang's way of life. Obviously, because of this tight bond between all gang members, if anyone was to betray a fellow member of the gang, this would be seen as a heinous crime and probably the worst a Valentino could commit. And if they were found out, would be punished, most likely with a gruesome death. For those on the front line defending the gang's honor, however, if they were to die fighting another gang, the police, or a corporate enforcer, they would be hailed as a saint as well as a martyr and commemorated in song as well as depicted on giant murals. Essentially, they would be seen as saints and their work would be immortalized within street art for all to see. The Valentinos are a traditional gang with a true hierarchy structure to them. They are extremely loyal to anyone who is a member of their organization and will defend their locations to the death, making those who died in the process saints. They have some of the best finances, safe havens for community, and large numbers that you would have to be mad to try and take from them. Whilst not the most terrifying gang on the list, they certainly are one to be fearful of. Moving on to a more medium sized gang within Night City, we have the 2,300 men and women from the gang known as Sixth Street. After the huge war that was known as the Fourth Corporate War, many people went back to their everyday lives, trying to rebuild their respective communities. However, for many veterans who served during that war, they did not want to simply give up and in fact wanted to continue serving their country. Together, they would go on to call themselves Proud Patriots and name themselves as the Sixth Street. One of the main reasons for why this group would start up was because of the really lacklustre performance of the NCPD, who in the Sixth Street's eyes were not doing enough within the city to clean up crime on the streets and so felt like they could do it themselves. After all, they were heavily trained and still had all of their gear from the last war. By the year of 2045, the Sixth Street gang was heavily armed with military grade weaponry as well as the latest cyberware to turn the tides of war, with a lot of their weapons and tech being supplied to them by Arasaka's biggest rival, Militech, as well as Kandachi. But although this gang might seem extremely well off and very very powerful, the gang finds itself in a financial crisis struggling to raise enough funds to pay their bills on vehicles, bases and other necessities. For that reason the 6th street have to abandon all of their principles of fighting crime and instead turn to crime themselves, taking up regular abductions, robberies and also forcing smaller communities and businesses into hiring them to be their protectors. Using their authority image the 6th street gangsters will abuse all of their power on the community and will not hesitate on taking out anyone who disagrees with their views and methods of achieving so-called peace. Essentially, what was once a spin-off of the NCPD taking crime into their own hands have now turned into a heavily militarized group of criminals who use their patriotism and appearance to walk all over small communities and take things for themselves. They will do anything for money which includes pimping out stolen vehicles and selling them on abducting people and abusing small businesses and on top of all of that they are still backed by the megacorps of both Militech and Kandachi as well as many other big corporations who truly believe they are doing a better job cleaning the streets out than the NCPD. The 6th Street are extremely deceptive individuals. Whilst they look like proud American soldiers, at the end of the day they could take you out in an instant posing as peacekeepers or just abduct you from your community to seek ransom them just so they can pay their own bills. The Sixth Street Gang are not to be messed with at all. In the 
early 2000s and most likely up to the 2020s, there was one gang within Night City that seemed to want to go to war against everyone. This gang was known as the Inquisitors, who would want to wipe out anyone who used any form of cyberware as they would consider it to be evil and blasphemous. During their time within Night City, they would in fact go to war against every other gang in the city. One in particular was called the Metal Warriors, who were proudly using any form of cyberware they could get their hands on and heavily modified themselves with it. During this war, however, the Inquisitors would completely wipe out this gang and force the survivors to flee and seek opportunities elsewhere. It didn't take long for these members to find a new area and regroup, bringing with them new members from other factions who had been destroyed by the Inquisitors as well, such as those of the Red Chrome Legion, a militant neo-fascist group compromised of skinheads, and members of Iron Sights, an Arasaka security controlled and finance group. Forming together through a mutual hatred for the Inquisitors, this new gang would call themselves Maelstrom and would continue to embrace the ways of cyberware and heavily modifying themselves. Their main target is of course the Inquisitors, however that is not to say that is all they strive for and actually Maelstrom would go out of their way to attack anyone who really gets in their way or holds a different view to their own, with even members inside their own faction taking each other out for a power move like that of Brick and Royce in 2077. This was all thanks to the downfall of their original leader when in the Metal Warriors named Hammer, who was thrown out, and with him was their code of honor as well. Despite being wiped out by the Inquisitors, Maelstrom members continued to expand their chrome, dressing in it as well as leather outfits, and then using highly visible cyberware, usually on their faces, to give off a primitive, terrifying, and dangerous persona, with some almost looking like they are metal arachnid human hybrids. But with this huge amount of chrome they add to themselves, this adds to their cyber psycho numbers, with it being reported that a third of their members are clinical cyber psychos, with another third of them being on the borderline of it, meaning that even just trying to have a regular conversation with them could turn into bloodshed. The only saving grace is that if you are chased down by the members of Maelstrom and some inquisitors show up, you will no longer be a target as their attention would be drawn immediately to their old enemy, meaning you could get to safety. But what are the chances of that? Maelstrom are fiercely territorial, holding most of their power within the docks of Night City, as well as setting up their operations within an abandoned building near there. After setting up there, most of their operations were pretty tame, with them just being mainly small crimes. But as they get more and more powerful with better cyberware and weaponry, their hunger for expansion gets bigger by the day. And thanks to their use of drugs as well, this only allows for them to launch larger attacks on bigger targets within the docks area. By the year of 2077, the Maelstrom gang now holds 1,300 members and hold up within the All Foods plant led by their new leader Royce, who, as mentioned previously, has deposed and imprisoned the last boss of Brick. Whilst they might at first glance seem like a small, weak faction, they are some of the most technologically advanced, with some of the best weapons they can get their hands on. That, as well as the fact that almost two-thirds of their gang are cyber psychos, could mean that they will absolutely obliterate you in such a sadistic manner and will probably enjoy every minute of it. That, and their hunger for power and more and more cyberware, means that they will stop at nothing to get what they want, with even some instances, the members capturing innocent individuals to carve them up and stick cyberware in them just for laughs. In the end, coming face to face with a member of Maelstrom will be a terrifying experience as they stare you down with their brutal looking cyberware. It will certainly be an experience you will never forget, and for a lot of people, it will be the last thing they ever see. And the final one on our list is the large organization that was mentioned right at the beginning when talking about the Mox gang. These are the Tiger Claws, or how they were originally named Tiger's Claw. Formed like all the others within 2020, the Tiger Claws were a small defensive combat gang who were originally based within the original Japan town and surrounding areas claiming it as their official turf. Unlike with Maelstrom, the Tiger Claws were not that bothered at the start about using cyberware, but leaving their skills in martial arts, enhanced reflexes, and traditional Japanese weapons to do the work for them. The gang was ultimately helped during 
during this time by their close ally being Arasaka, who would finance all of their weapons and training and help them protect their turf. But by the year of 2045 and after the fourth corporate war and name change to the Tiger Claws, this gang would supposedly break away from the help of Arasaka, with their main aim now being to protect the Asian community of Night City. With Japantown being devastated by the war, the Tiger Claws played a huge part in rebuilding this area and making it a safe haven once again for the community. But at the same time, this gang would continue to hone their martial arts and reflexes as well as tend to their motorbikes, in which the gang would use to get around with a lot of the time. But despite wanting to rebuild Japantown, the Tiger Claws would not stop there and would look at moving into the nearby Watson development area. By 2077, the gang continued on the same, housing some of the finest warriors anyone had ever seen. The only real change was that they had started using cyberware with most of their warriors not only being extremely well trained, but housing some of the finest cyberware on the market to make the difference in combat. With one of their notable pieces being the Smart Sling, an implant that would allow the user to use the Smart Targeting module in Smart Weapons and the Projectile Launch System, as well as tracking targets in real time. Most within the Japantown area really respect the Tiger Claws because of their rise to power from humble beginnings, and now admire how much they have become one of the largest gangs in the whole of Night City, similar to the Yakuza, with some of the most trained and dangerous warriors out there. The only notable wars they had been involved with were the attack on Lizzie's Bar with the newly formed Mox and the new territory feuds with the Steel Dragons, a small gang also located in Japantown who had originated from Tokyo. Whilst the Tiger Claws aren't completely barbaric or seek out anyone to take out, they will attack anyone who crosses them, and even if one small member of their gang is attacked or looked at badly, the whole full force of the Tiger Claws will attack them and make sure the threat is taken out. But despite that, the ones at the top of the gang believe business is the more preferable route than war, as it will be better for them in the long run. But with that said, a lot of the lesser soldiers within their ranks would rather fight other gangs and make a name for themselves that way, with many of them getting involved in abductions, tortures, and cruel or unusual killings, mainly due to them just being bored. There are a few within the gang who do abuse their gang status on members of their community and on their turf. However, to their bosses, this is seen as extremely dishonorable. With that said, however, many outsiders within Tiger Claw territory never make a fuss or respect their rule on the land, meaning that the Tigers have a firm grasp on their land and the areas surrounding it. Not only are they well respected currently, but the Tigers also control the majority of Night City's nightlife district, which is primarily located within Japantown, as well as owning many other bars, restaurants, brain dance clubs, brothels, and casinos, meaning their income is so much higher than any other gang out there, and their spread over Night City is far larger than any of the others. But although most of these businesses are officially labeled as such, many are just a front for their other more illegal operations such as human trafficking and prostitution, as well as manufactured drugs they label as glitter. But that's not all. The Tigers also hire themselves out for hit jobs to make sure of their advanced combat skills. This is incredibly useful to many corporations who deem the Tigers as one of the go-tos for assassinations and other tasks that require finesse. This played perfectly into Arasaka's hands, as once again the Tigers got along extremely well with their upper management, providing them with side jobs and paying them with cyber technology and military grade automatic weapons. It's safe to say that because of all of this, that the Tiger Claws are the most powerful gang within the whole of Night City. Not only do they have an extremely well organized and efficient organization with its higher ups, they also have some of the most deadly warriors out of all the other gangs, and on top of that, control the most businesses in Night City compared to any of the other gangs, with also financial and military backing from one of the largest megacorps within the world, Arasaka. Whilst they can be pretty tame to many outsiders who venture into their areas to spend money, if you were to wrong their organization, all 5,500 members of the Tiger Claws will come down on them and hit them with their full combat force. If there were to be a new war between all of the gangs of Night City, you'd be mad not to put money into these well-trained warriors, carrying with them high-grade cyberware and automatic weapons. In my eyes, and to the eyes of many within Night City, the Tiger Claws are the fiercest of them all, and you best hope you do not get on their bad side. 
But altogether, as a regular citizen of Night City, you would not want to get on the wrong side of any of these gangs. They have all proved themselves at one point in time that they are not to be messed with. And if you do, they will hit you and hit you hard, with some being more sadistic than the rest. Maybe one day Night City will be a calmer place where gangs don't rule their areas anymore, or will just turn into more peaceful areas for their communities. But for now, in the year of 2077, Night City is a heavily divided city, with some of the most terrifying gangs you could ever find out there. And whether you are just a regular citizen, a business owner, or an edge runner, you better pray that you don't end up on the bad side of the mocks, the animals, the scabs, the Valentinos, the Voodoo Boys, Maelstrom, or even the Tiger Claws. But those are the inner city gangs of Cyberpunk 2077. Which one would you say is the most terrifying or one you think is the most powerful within Night City? Let me know in the comments below. I want to thank you all for watching this video and if you do want to support this channel make sure you pick up a tub of G Fuel as it really helps the channel out and also they are really really good drinks that are so refreshing especially if you do not like coffee like me. Or if you want to support me any other way you can become a Patreon or YouTube channel member like these amazing people. So such as my small fishes, my big fishes Christopher, last persona user and Articrem, my YouTube channel Wise Ones Fiery Italian, Ico the Wolf, and our new guy Sith Lord 906, my sharks while such gaming and Jason X117, and my Megalodons Sinus Jacob Garcia and Chernobyl Stalker. Also make sure you check out my other lore videos in the description below and leave a sub if you haven't already. But that is all for now. Thank you all for watching. Check out my G Fuel link to support this channel further, and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.